Um, we did want to make sure that you don't put the mulch right up against the foundation because that will attract bugs and you don't want to attract bugs. And it also holds water and moisture. So you definitely don't want that to happen either. So you definitely want to make sure that you're getting that mulch away from there. You also want to be cutting back a lot of like your trees in front of your house and bushes. You don't want those growing up the side of your house. Again, it's just a really great place for bugs to sort of hang out and uh, get into your house and do more damage. Now I know like last week I actually had uh, safety fumigant mm -hmm. who um, they come to they the come office. Here, yeah. yeah. They come to the office and they go to um, my house. They came by and they did their exterior spraying. So they must be spraying for, I'm trying to get them to come on the show um, because I think it would be a good show to have about, yeah. you know, exterminating and what to do for regular maintenance. So you want to make sure that you're doing that mm -hmm. and um, mice right now, right? Mice everywhere. Yeah. Mice, I mice. mean, it's, it's not like, I feel like mice get sort of a bad rap. Like it's not mm. like totally terrible when you find a mouse in your house, although mm. like they're not supposed to live there, but like, yeah. it's not that uncommon mm -hmm. um, unless it's Casey, Casey. Caught, yeah. Casey it was 15 Casey. of them in her apartment. Um, in the South End, yeah. By like the way. We've, we've had a mouse or two in the house in, in the couple of years mm -hmm. that I've lived um, with Mary and like Zoe just wants to play with it, yeah. like, and just, murder it no, but Zoe is her cat not Zoe's her child cat. no <laughs> um but I was I'm sorry I was just thinking about the mice because on the outside I know a lot of times people will put like you know those flannel covers over their AC condensers and I've heard that that is not really a good idea or recommended like they are built the way that they're built to keep the snow and everything out but when you put those on there the mice like to sort of hide in there so mm -hmm. make sure that you go and sort of inspect your AC unit before you turn it on because this is the time of year that you would want to be checking it just to make sure because you don't want to wait until the first heat wave to call your HVAC guy to tell them you have no AC. So you want to do that. You want to change your vents as well inside your house, all your air filters. There's so much to do when you own a house. Yeah. You just jumped inside. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's because I started talking about well, the AC. Yeah. What else, okay. Well, what else do we have going on outside before we move to the interior hmm. pool? Yeah. The pool, but you know, I don't know. You should have a company. So, I mean, I'm married to a plumber, so he does all that. So, I mean, yeah. I take care of the cabana. I'll, I'll be cleaning out the cabana this weekend. You know, we'll put the refrigerator on and all the water. That's the other thing too, is with like your Silcox, hope, hopefully you shut those off the right way. Even if you have a frost proof Silcox, uh, you want to make sure that um, hopefully you detached your hose from that because the water can get backed up and it can still crack and split, but you want to make sure that, um, you know, you didn't have any cracks or freeze ups this past winter. Um, we did have a very cold winter. I thought, um, I feel like we're having a very cold spring. Yeah. Yeah. I'm tired of it. We had a nice day last week. I yeah, think. But, but today was day. cold. Yeah. One day doesn't cold. make up for how cold I am I all the time around here. Mm -hmm. That's true. Um, again, you're listening to talk real estate round table. I am Sharon McMara, the broker owner of Boston connect real estate located here on the South shore and our agents uh, service all of South shore, South coast, down to the Cape. We do Metro Boston. We do, we're all over. So um, if you have any questions for any of us and our agents, feel free to call the office. 781-826-8000. Uh, and Melissa is happy to get you connected with one of our agents who can is happy to help you. Yeah. Uh, but if you have questions for us tonight, how can they reach us? Um, you can reach us. Did you get the studio number? Sorry, I wasn't listening. No, I'm asking. 781-837-4900. Oh, um, or give us a little shout out on Facebook. Um, okay. Exterior, anything else? We we said walk around. Well, you want to gutters, check out the roof. Check right? out the roof. So Instabright, I know they do a lot of commercials on WATD and they do a great job because if you get that moss buildup on your, you know, on the side of your house, if you have vinyl, you don't even have to have vinyl, whatever you have and on your roof, you definitely don't want to just take a power washer and just like attack it. Yeah. I was reading like, um, I was reading something that said, uh, give your house a bath. Yeah. But you don't necessarily need a power washer mm. um, because you could actually do more damage yep. than good. Like mm -hmm. not every house needs a power washer. So yeah, go ahead. yeah, because the power wash sometimes what people will do is they just put mm -hmm. it on full force and, make and sure then they're you, taking yeah. away the shingles. Make sure you close all your windows and doors before you <laughs> give your house yeah. a bath. <laughs> well, actually, I've had a client in the past who um, he had somebody come and they power washed the house and 
did a terrible job and they chopped up a lot of the cedar shingles and it was like stuck in their screens yeah. and on their windows and everything else. So I say hire a professional. I know um, Instabright again is the company that I use for both the office and for my home. And they do like a spray. Like I have to do it like maybe every five years. And what it does like on the roof, like there's some areas that will get like sort of that like little buildup of mossy, whatever. Yeah. And it just dries out with the sun and falls off. Yeah. Um, something you want to also look for anything that's on the exterior of your home that might be made of wood. You want to look for any cracks that or damage from mm-hmm. water. Um, I think I read something that it's like called winter grime. So like mm. you don't, Oh, we do. we do. What is our caller's name? I'm sorry. Who was it? It's Bonnie from Pembroke. Hello, Hi, Bonnie. Bonnie. How are you? <laughs> oh, we're here. We miss you. Yeah. We have to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, absolutely. Love to know what you recommend for natural shingles, which I cannot stand, that are on three sides of my house. Mm. Oh. And that is like a power wash type of thing. You know, I would call Instabright. They do a really good job. I have them at my house. Yeah. Um, and that's they, why I looked at you. I'm like, you have natural yeah, shingles. Yeah, we have natural guys. shingles at my house, and you know, and that's one of the things too is if you have the natural that sort of went to like the um like sort of like that brownish color, I would suggest calling Instabright, having a good cleaning done on it, and then have a painter come out. And because when we put our shingles up on our house, we had the pre-dipped ones. So it had a little bit of color to it. Like, but, and then just, I would just stain them if you don't like them. You don't have to do the whole paint thing. That's just my question. Mm. Yeah. But I would definitely have Instabright go there. Oh, Oh, you do? (laughs) Good. I'm sure his name's Wanda. We haven't. So we have, I know, I know we haven't. Um, yeah, we, <laughs> I could go on about why I've named all the, we do have, um, two clownfish. So obviously one is Nemo. I didn't name that one, but then I named the other one elbow because it's Nemo elbow. <laughs> Very funny. Um, yeah, but we, and then we have a Dory fish. I don't even know what's the, what's the name of a Dory fish. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. I didn't Dory. name that one either, but I've, I've named Mm-hmm. That was Ed Kennedy's sailboat. Oh, oh that's a good. Oh, you can have a beautiful that's good. Angel well, yeah. I was I was looking up uh, who was it? Harold Vanderbilt was a sailor. He was a he he got a lot of um. So I was going to name him Harold. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm really I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by the Kennedys. You know, like last yeah, summer I, know, I read I know, like I four books on the Kennedys. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. yeah. Called Wiano's, Wiano Jr. and Wiano Sr. Oh, interesting. Wiano, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's good. Yeah, we had a, um, yeah, we had one that looked like a salamander. His name was Sal, obviously, but I don't even know what kind of, he passed away, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> but um, we got a new one today. He's, he's like clear, but with red all over him. So I named him Sid or Sidious because one of the um, Darth. It's Darth Sidious from, from Star Wars. <laughs> so his name's Sid. So we have Sal and you Sid. Know, you know we're having too, way too much fun over here, Bonnie. We'll have to come and visit us again. Yeah, come and visit the fish. Say hi to Mark and Debbie. Your girls are doing a great job. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah, you definitely Bonnie. give Instabright a call. I will. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Bye. So that was Bonnie from Pembroke. She's one of our listeners. Mark does the plumbing at her house. She's great. She actually stopped by. I remember she had won a gift certificate. Yeah, yeah. She came by and we're sitting here chatting with her. And yeah, we have to go take a cruise one yeah. day too. So we will plan on doing oh, that. Oh yeah, we'll take a cruise. Yeah, we're going to take a cruise yeah. with her. We'll go into Boston. We're also and all going cruises. to Vegas together. It's <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> a company. Um, so, all right. So back to our topic. We are talking about spring maintenance yeah. tips. Uh, even, you know, whether you're thinking about selling your house or not, these are just really good tips that you should be thinking about doing just to keep, you know, up with the maintenance of your home. And, you know, so when the time does come that you don't have to try to do everything all at once. So, you know, now that the winter is over, I think it's a really good time to have your boiler sort of uh, cleaned, Mm -hmm. right? Especially Mm -hmm. if you have oil, you know what I mean? Just just, uh, force hot water with oil. Uh, even if you, well, I don't know. Yeah. So anyways, if you have a boiler, you should definitely, (laughs) you know, I would think have that cleaned out. Yeah. I mean, why wait until you get, you know what I mean? Right now things are sort of slowing down for those people. That's when you want to have these services done. One of the services, um, jumping into the inside right now, again, is, 
I just contacted somebody this week to clean out all of the air ducts in both the office and in my home. So uh, they are going to be coming to the office on May 10th. And it's pretty inexpensive, you know, but you're breathing this stuff in. If you think about you know, one of the things I was thinking about is at my house when we had, we just had the hardwood floors sort of done. So there's like a lot of, even though they say it's dustless, there's dust all over. There was dust all over the place. So I know that that's stuck in the vents. So I want to have those cleaned. I want to have my dryer vents are going to get cleaned. Um, I'm just going to go into my little OCD yeah. moments. Yeah. Um, something else that I um, came up with was sump pump. So mm. make sure that your sump pump, because in the spring it rains a lot. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that your sump pump is working before all of that rain, which you should probably do it even before the snow starts to melt, because mm -hmm. once the snow starts to melt, obviously there's water. Mm -hmm. um, so you want to make sure that if that water happens to come into your basement, mm -hmm. um, that that the sump pump is working, but mm -hmm. it's, it rains a lot. I mean, it was raining today. It was, it was like Florida. It was bright and sunny and raining today. I didn't even see it raining. Well, when I went to go get coffee, it was pouring. Oh, I didn't even notice. Yeah. I was so like intrigued in my office doing whatever I was doing. Um, yeah. So I do think with the sump pump, I think it's really a good idea to also have like a battery backup on yeah. those. Um, uh, just because a lot of times when you have these big storms, you lose electricity. So I know that I did have a listing one time down the Cape and and nobody was living in it at the time. And the electricity was going on and off, on and off, on and off. And it blew out the yeah. circuit breaker yeah. and the sump pump broke. And there was mm, a good foot of water in that basement. Um, I know that you talked about the chimney, but like, even for people, like, I'm just thinking about like at our house, we really only had maybe one or two fires this, yeah. this um, winter. But I feel like even when you don't use something, I feel like it's all the more reason to have it checked because it's not doing what it's oh, made to, be to doing. do. Yeah. Like, you know, so you sort of forget about it and you're not using it. So like you just sort of move on and, and do something else. But I feel like things or mechanicals that you don't regularly use, mm -hmm. you should be sort of looking at those things to make sure that when you do go mm -hmm. to use them, they are going to work. Well, I remember when I think it was it was at Mary's in Sam's house that something went, I think the water heater went yeah, I think the water and heater. he, so that was like vented through something in the basement. But when he opened it up, it was like stuffed with like bird, like a bird had made a nest and everything else in there. And that's like really, really dangerous. So you want to make sure that you're checking your flus and everything else to make sure that there isn't anything stuck in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't want carbon monoxide coming back in your house. That's yeah. why you should also have your carbon monoxide detectors. So those are good for 10 years. So if you've had yours been in your house for 10 years and never changed out your carbon monoxide detectors, now you have to do that. And there are all kinds of rules that go along with that. So you can get all that information. Uh, state of Massachusetts has, you know, the fire department for the marshal fire marshal um, has all that information, but every town may have a different, uh, bylaw to go along with it. For example, Pembroke has a bylaw that you have to have a smoke detector above your dryer. Yeah. Not every town has that. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you're checking in with your town mm -hmm. to make sure that you're putting all those in the yeah. right place. Some towns require a smoke detector in every bedroom mm. or 10 feet from a bedroom door. That's um, the carbon monoxide. Yeah. Every 10, it has to be within 10 feet of every bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but I also think that a rule of thumb should be, if you look up in your smoke detector is yellow, you should change it because <laughs> not only is it gross. <laughs> well, and you know, we just had, daylight, it's probably old. Yeah. We just had daylight savings recently too. And that's a really good reminder to change out the batteries. So you be, should be changing those out every twice a year, you know, changing out the batteries, but, um, the other thing too, there are a lot of rules that go along with your carbon monoxide detectors and your smoke detectors, because if you have, if they're um, hardwired, then they all have to be hardwired. So you definitely should uh, look into that. And too, I mean, you want to be safe with your family. I know that there was a fire recently in Pembroke. It came up on my ring doorbell alert. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, Av. Anyways. Yeah. 
also like there's requirements that they have to talk to each other mm. and and if fire fire fire, fire. carbon monoxide detected <laughs> um so they have to talk to each other mm-hmm. um if they're hardwired all that fun stuff battery yeah. operated when they start twerp- twerping <laughs> when, when they start chirping that doesn't mean you just go ahead and undo it and <clears throat> hopefully it will go away yeah. i'll never forget the time you know and that was when i was new in the career so it was I've been doing this, what, 21 years now? feels like I've been saying 21 years for a very long time, but 20 years ago, 21 years. But I remember going to a house and I showed up and all the uh, smoke detectors were out on the driveway, like all like smashed, but they were still chirping. And I went in the house and there was like, you know, like a two-year-old baby walking around with a diaper. There was a big St. Bernard in there that frequented on the floor. Oh. Yeah. And I was like, I want to call, I want to call somebody because this is terrible. Yeah. I was like, you need to have your smoke detectors up. So anyways, mm. make sure you have them up. Okay. All right. What's next? Um, I don't know. We're inside. So what, mm-hmm. what else, um, spring maintenance tips inside? Yeah. So, um, we were talking about the vents already, which is good, but other than, um, the maintenance, I think that one, this time of year, what's really good to do as well is just to like purge and to go through things because things just pile up, pile up, pile up. I find myself doing that all the time. Like, Oh, I'm just going to throw it at the bottom of the stairs in the basement and then I'll put it away later. So it's a really good time to just sort of clean out your garage, clean out your attic spaces. <clears throat> when you're up in your attic, you should be looking at your, you know, look at the, the up above, see, is there any signs of mold is, did any water penetrate over the winter? Um, just making sure that you have no little critters up there and making sure that things are cleaned out. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> cleaning, spring cleaning. Yeah, I love spring cleaning. <clears throat> spring cleaning, but also probably maintaining that throughout mm-hmm. the year yeah. <laughs> would be best too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, something when I was doing the research is um, establish a family emergency plan. Hmm. Hmm. I think, um, I, you know, with sort of families or living dynamics, it, it changes every so often. So mm-hmm. to sort of all be on the same page of what happens if this happens, what happens if this happens, mm-hmm. that type of thing. Um, I just saw a story um, on the news, actually. It was actually a nice story. She, I think it was like a little girl. She was like four years old. Her mother had passed out in the house and she called 911 and they asked her what her address was and she couldn't remember the number. I think it was like in Florida and she ran out to the mailbox to get the number off of the mailbox, Uh which I thought was pretty smart for a four-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, I have a plan. (laughs) Yeah. Well, in Pembroke, you have to have your numbers on your house visible from the street. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. That's something she could have just looked up. Yeah. She lived in Pembroke. The other thing too, that, um, it's so interesting because this isn't really a maintenance tip, but it is something that definitely comes up when you have daylight savings is timers. Cause I don't yeah. know why all timers just aren't dust to dawn, but that's just me. Um, and then they have, you know, the timers that you have to set and the numbers are so small. Like you can't even read these things, but anyways, I noticed that all my lights are coming on when it's still bright out. So you want to go around to all your timers. You should just make a checklist and just walk around. Yeah. Your house. I mean, you could spend all day just doing these little things all day, every day. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, setting different timers. I know like at, at least at our house, like every so often Sam might, you know, decide, okay, we want to leave the light on throughout the night, or we want to leave the light on just like during the day or not leaving us. So mm-hmm. sort of establishing what it is because now it's like I, ooh, it, a month ago, it was pitch black outside mm-hmm. right now when mm-hmm. we're doing the show. And now it's so bright. Well, mm-hmm. not so bright, but at least it's the sun's going to sleep and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, so it, it changes, it literally changes overnight. Yep. So Um, keeping up with that. So another thing to think about is uh, your septic system. So you want to just maybe have that uh, pumped out. This is a good time of year to have that done so they can put the grass back and it will grow in. Um, That's the other thing too. We are going to have, um, we were going to have him on tonight, uh, but he wasn't able to do it. But um, we're going to have a landscaper on uh, just to talk about what are some maintenance tips and ideas to get that lawn nice and green and um, like doing lime and he's going to be doing all kinds of stuff at our house. So did we talk about sprinklers? 
No, we did not. No. So, and you've been talking about sprinklers, I, I feel like yesterday, at least I a know. lot yesterday. Um, and t- talking with this gentleman that you were mm-hmm. just saying um, about sprinklers and, and hopefully not hitting a line if we put a tent up. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but but sprinklers also have a timer, mm-hmm. right? So, um, and I think, is it true that you should sort of the first time you put your sprinklers on for the season, you should do it by zone. So, you know, that like mm. the sprinkler heads pop up. Yep. You have um, to go around and check each sprinkler head. Yeah. So I know Mark takes care of all that stuff with us, but he'll put the sprinklers on and he'll just make sure that each head will pop up. So you just have to adjust them. Yeah. They have little tools too that you have, and it can just adjust them and rotate them just to make sure that they're not like stuck in one position uh, over the winter. So they get all like stuck down and everything. Mm-hmm. So you put those on, make sure that those are ready to go and get that grass nice and green. And you should have a well if you have sprinklers. So I know a lot of towns don't allow you to use water from your house. Yeah. So anyways, that's just my tidbit on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, also like even being familiar with the town regulations mm-hmm. um, are important because even if you are preparing to put your house in the market for spring, um, you know, if you come across a buyer who is savvy or ha- has a savvy buyer's agent, they're going to ask for, um, for, oh my God, the words, um, inspection? no, um, what? permits, permits. Yes. So you mm-hmm. want to make sure that if you do any home improvements to your home, you are, you know, within the sort of town guidelines and you get the right permits and, mm-hmm. um, because someone will probably be asking for those. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, when you're thinking about all the different things to do around your house, again, our, you, the goal is, is to make everything that you have last a little bit longer. And I know with some of the listings that we've had in the past, I remember one that we had last year, we got so many comments just because the house was so clean. Um, it was so organized. I mean, those are my favorite listings that I go into. And, you know, we had one a few years ago and he had like his tool, like his workshop down in the basement and he had like his hammers, his screwdrivers, everything were up on the wall. And he actually had them traced out with like a black Sharpie. Mm -hmm. So he knew where each thing went. And then he also had, um, this other one that we had last week was, um, not last week, last year, he had like labeled all of his paint cans. We had more people compliment on the paint cans than anything else, but that just shows pride of ownership. So if Mm -hmm. you do go to sell your house, you have it, um, all taken care of. (laughs) <laughs> getting you with your eyes closed. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm just taking a picture. No, I'm just doing our social media stuff. Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, the exterior of your home is the first thing that people are going to see, mm-hmm. you, whether they're trying to buy it or not. Yeah. So, um, you know, pride of ownership. And is just really... freshening things up just makes you feel good when you yeah. pull up to your house and there's nothing left. You know, you know what I mean? Like, it just feels so good to to drive up and see, like, I put some flowers out this weekend. Um and it just, I don't know, it just makes you feel good, you know, check your front door and you can paint, you know, paint your front door if it has all any chipping paint mm-hmm. or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, you know, one thing too, that's always so good to do this time of year inside when you're doing like sort of that spring cleaning is just a really, really, really good wash of like your floors, just because over the winter people are dragging in, you know, dirt and debris and with the dogs and everything else with the mud and everything, um, given, I gave my floor such a good cleaning on Sunday. It felt so good to just have nice clean floors. It's almost like my favorite day. You know, my favorite day. Yes. Balanced um, checkbooks and clean sheets. Yeah. I, tr- I coordinate it like on the same de- time yeah. frame. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I, yeah. Now I change my sheets like on the same like day every week. So like uh-huh. every single Saturday I change my every sheets. Week. We do ours on Sundays. So <laughs> usually anyways, sometimes I do them on Mondays though. Well, sometimes I do them on Sundays because then like at the end of the day, I take a nice shower oh, yeah. and I get into a nice clean bed, mm. new jammies. Yeah. It's fun. So I was talking to Larry. <laughs> I don't know if he's still there right now, but I was talking to Larry um, a couple of days ago or yesterday. And one of the things that he was doing was he was planting his flowers. So mm-hmm. he was, you know, getting some of his spring, you know, little chores done and planting flowers is always a fun, nice meditative thing to do around your house. Yeah. And we are going to be doing some, uh, 
some spring f- flower arrangements around here, like we do every year. Yeah. Um, so we actually hired somebody mm-hmm. um, for our uh, administrative coordinator here at the office. So she yeah. started last week. Um, and so when I was going through some of the things with her, one of it was, um, I asked her, do you like the sun? Cause I don't like the sun. <laughs> um, and she said, I love the sun. Um, and I said, oh, perfect. Because in the spring and summertime, we like to go out here and like water all the plants and water mm. the hanging plants and everything. And she was like, I can't wait for that. Aww. I love that. So she, that's her job. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm giving that to her. Oh, I can't, I can't she do can it anymore. I was picking off those dead things. I, don't know I, yeah. know, I can't deadhead and things. Um, again, you are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable with Sharon McNamara and Melissa Wallace. Our team members, uh, Mary Baker and Evis Mason, Mason, are at the Red Sox game tonight. So ladies, if you're on your way in and you happen to be listening to us, have fun tonight. I gave Ed- Evis a little cash and I said, here, buy yourselves a couple rounds of drinks nice. on me. Yeah. So, um, but if you have any questions for us regarding real estate, uh, 781 781- 837-4900. Larry uh, is at the studio and he can get you through to us and we can continue talking about this discussion. It seems to have gone by a lot faster than it did on Saturday. <laughs> oh, really? I feel like this is going by slower. Yeah. Well, I mean, like our topics, like, oh. like we talked about a lot of things. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I feel like we have more energy tonight for some reason. Yeah, I know. I feel, well, I don't know. We're on a, we're on a fish high. Yeah. That's when Saturdays, Saturdays is like, you know, people are calling us Tuesday night people. How come you're not calling us to say hello? Um, but anyways, go ahead. What else can we discuss? Um, and the inside, so we talked about air conditioning, um, sort of, and even if you use window units, um, Mm -hmm. you know, you don't have central AC, you want to make sure that those are all, um, your, your window will actually support it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's good. Um, ceiling fans. I read that like you should reverse the setting on your ceiling fan to counterclockwise. So it pushes the air down, um, and it creates like a nice breeze. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's interesting too, is because I sometimes will walk around my house with like a little notebook because, you know, like sometimes I'll be, you walk like in my, my laundry room, my closet that I have in my laundry room where I keep all my laundry detergent. It's just like those wire like um, shelves yeah, and they sort of sink in the middle a little bit because the laundry detergent's so heavy. So it's been on my list of things. And I'm like, every time I open that up, I was like, Mark, he told me he was going to change those out for me. And I know that he's been so busy around doing stuff around the yard and everything. Um, but I think it's good to just walk around your house with a notebook and just yeah. sort of just have like a little, I guess you would call it a honeydew list um, and just make all those little you know, little comments, like some of the things too, I'm looking out our front window here, we're right in Pembroke Center, right across the street from Stop and Shop, like all the doors and screens. And you want to just make sure, you know, you know, the, um, the, the ceiling, the the sealant. (laughs) (laughs) I just felt like we were on that show pyramid. Yeah. (laughs) Or like, uh, what's the word? Yeah. The weather stripping. Yeah. You know, around that it's a good time to, you know, get all of those things adjusted. So, and here's the thing we were talking uh, on Saturday when we were getting ready for Saturday's show, we're like, Oh, do we talk about the importance of, uh, curb appeal? There really isn't. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> right now People I mean we're just buying houses right now <laughs> yeah I know that right now I mean we'll probably talk about this maybe this weekend and next week a little bit more about you know buyer fatigue and buyer frustration and um you know with the interest rates have gone up I heard they're in the like five and a half right now and you know that's going to sort of you know put a little a little something in our market, I feel. And, oh, this is what I'll talk about. So my prediction last week on Saturday was that I feel that we're going to have a situation where we're, we're going to have even less inventory as we're coming into the fall, Mm -hmm. going through the summer and into the fall. And my reason for that is because the interest rates are going up. So there may be a group of people who were like, all right, I'm just going to wait until the kids get out of school. I'm going to put my house on the market. Um, or somebody who's just like, you know what, I just want to have one more summer here Mm -hmm. in this house. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do it in the fall. We're always very, very busy in the fall. And I just think with the interest rates going up and, you know, a lot of people took advantage of refinancing 
when the rates were so low. I know when, when I refin- refin- when I refinanced my house, it was like 2.375, mm-hmm. you know? So I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to say, why would I leave this low interest rate to go to a smaller house and probably have a mortgage mm-hmm. or have a bigger mortgage mm-hmm. with more, you know, with a rate. So I feel like we will probably have another slowdown. Um, but then somebody oh, wanted yeah, to school me. Yeah. yeah. So somebody wanted to school me on that and sent me a text and said that the um, the mom moratorium. How do you say that word? The moratorium. The moratorium. Yeah. So that has ended. Yeah. So a lot of people who had put their, you know, they weren't paying their, um, their mortgage, Mm -hmm. remember because of COVID Mm -hmm. and people were losing their jobs and everything. So that is coming to an end. They just extended it again, I think through August. I just feel like they're going to continue to continue to extend that. But those people, a lot of people didn't fully understand the rules yeah. that went along with that. We talked about this, I think, with Jasmine. I think mm. we had talked to, was it her that she was on the show? Jasmine Glasgow from uh, mm. Maritime Mortgage. We were talking about people not understanding really what it is that they were doing. Yeah. I mean, how can you not? Yeah. So now all these people, I mean, some of the banks were like, okay, we're just going to let you tack your payments onto the end, which is okay. That's fine. But then there's another group of people. It's like, if you haven't been paying, they're expecting like a one lump balloon payment when, when it all ends. I mean, there's no way that anybody had been saving up that money. If they didn't have a job, they didn't have the money. So how are they going to be able to pay that back? So the person who was educating me. And I love that, um, was saying that chances are we'll see foreclosures that will come up. Um, and so that might bring in some more inventory. So, and that's another whole, you know, that's, I mean, I remember that market with foreclosures and yeah. short sales. It was, it was, well, I, I hope that's not what happens for mm-hmm. us to get more inventory. I mean, that would be terrible. We never yeah. want to see somebody have to, you know, leave their home because of that. Um, well, and the problem is, is if they even if banks foreclose on people's homes because they can't pay that, there's no place for people to go. Yeah. I'm on the affordable housing committee in the town of Pembroke, and we talk about this all the time. Like, what are we going to do? Like, there's no there's no affordable apartments. There's no place for people to go. So yeah. I also said that last year. My prediction was we are making a clear delineation between the have and the have nots when it comes to the housing industry, and I don't like it at all. But so we only have three minutes left. Yeah. Do you want to uh, let people know um, how they can find us and listen to our past shows? Yeah, you can go to talkrealestateroundtable.com, listen to any of our past shows. Um, you can go to your podcast app, Spotify. Um, you can say Alexa, Alexa play, play Talk Real Estate yeah. Roundtable. You can look up. We're, we're so famous that you can mm-hmm. even look up our names <laughs> and it'll pop up. <laughs> um, but you can listen to any of our past shows there. You can go to bostonconnect.com, get all of our content contact information. Give me a call here at the office, 781-826-8000. And I can connect you to either our team or anybody here at Boston Connect. We've had um, quite a few agents Mm. recently join us. um, So that's fun. We love having some guests, especially one of our own. Um, Mm -hmm. So you know, it's great recognition for them and promote their listings and everything. That's one of the things we'd love to do. We'd love to highlight our agents. We feel as if we have the best of the best and we're like a little family here at Boston Connect Real Estate. Mm -hmm. Everybody helping everybody out. I know last week, Trish and Nick were on with Mary. Yep. And then the week before you had Kristen on. No, I had um, Susan oh, Solis yeah, Susan and Solis, Michelle Faye. Michelle Faye um, the and then before. Kristen, I feel like we, I had Kristen on the week before. Yep. So yeah, we've had, um, we've mm-hmm. had quite a few, quite a few of our agents. So if you want to get in touch with any of them from our past shows, again, bostonconnect.com, 781-826-8000. Mm-hmm. Any final words? What are we talking about this weekend? I don't know what we'll talk about this weekend. If you have any ideas for us, though, we would love to hear them. So you can send us an email at realestate at bostonconnect.com, or you can call us at the office, 781-826-8000. You can even send me a text, 781-294-4848. That 45 minutes just went by very quickly. So I hope that everybody enjoys their Tuesday night. Go Red Sox. And Larry, thank you. It was fun having you with us tonight. Thank you, guys. All right. Send and Larry some hugs. So uh, there we go. We'll see you, everybody, next week. Have Bye. a good one, everybody. We'll be here Saturday, too, 10 a.m. I'm